What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Phones and Drones. This video has been three years in the making. We are coming up on our three year anniversary with our leased Tesla Model 3. So for those of you that don't follow the channel, obviously we did our initial video when we purchased this or picked it up, I should say. And it was meant to be the most basic Tesla that they offered at the time. So this was a Tesla Model 3 SR Plus. And with this, you got bare bone features. We did opt for full self-driving though, but the range was really the least acceptable rate that they offered us how we felt to begin with. Having said that, we were not aware fully of exactly how the range degradation would be, how road conditions matter, how charging capabilities really worked where you shouldn't charge it to 100% uh, with these batteries that were in it at the time three years ago. And it really did serve as a learning experience to us how well and what version of a Tesla you should get and how it operates in today's world if it's feasible to drive a fully electric vehicle. Now, along the way, it has been a it's been an awesome experience, to be honest with you guys. It was still one of the most fun cars we had. It led us to getting us our Model S that we have right now, the Refresh. It has been a really consistent daily driver. We have had, obviously, uh, some of the issues that you've heard about from other people in regards to Tesla service. Yes, it's not perfect, but it is not as bad as having to deal with the dealership on a regular basis and some of that other stuff. So, having said all that, in regards to charging this baby, we do have a home charger. We do have some free supercharging miles, so we've never actually paid to supercharge the vehicle. Thanks to all you guys that utilized that referral code when that program was still going on. So from a home charging standpoint, it has been very, very inexpensive. We are in Florida. Obviously, that will depend on where you live to see your different rates you're going to get. But all in all, from the ease of being able to go to sleep plugged in and wake up with a full you know tank so to speak not having to stop at a gas station it has been amazing now being that this is only a standard range plus it unfortunately range wise did not work as great as we were hoping that is the biggest downside of this vehicle there is by no means any real way if you're doing highway commuting to get anywhere near the, I think it was 250 miles at that point on this uh, 2020 Model S or Model 3. So uh, it comes up a lot closer, about 180-ish, if not a little less than that even. We have done regular trips from Jacksonville to St. Augustine, or excuse me, from Jacksonville to Orlando, and the travel time is definitely impacted by stopping to charge between here and there. And that's only about uh, 130 miles, 140 miles from here. So by no means is it uh, acceptable to me personally. You have a regular gas vehicle that can easily get you down from where I am to two and a half, three hours, possibly even four hours of driving uh, without having to stop and refuel. So something to keep in mind. From a value standpoint, if you're looking at getting into a Tesla vehicle without ever having an electric car before, and this is your first one, I definitely do recommend a lease. They are a little harder to, re to recommend now just because of how crazy the economy is. We're coming out of the end of 2022 and obviously rates are through the roof and it is very comparable to go through a purchase instead of a lease currently. But if you want to try it, if you don't like holding on to a vehicle over three years, I definitely think you can do a lot worse than leasing a Tesla. So if you lease a Tesla Model 3, if you do a standard range, obviously now they're a little more expensive than they were three years ago, um, you're going to be paying a substantial amount of payments just on a standard range Model 3 just due to that cost. But we've had no issues minus the two that we really showed on the channel um, with the service center when the vehicle just would not operate, couldn't put it in drive, it just kind of died in the parking lot, no warning. Um, that was our main only issue in three years of ownership. We've changed the tires once fully on the vehicle. It's to be expected. We put on about 35,000 miles, so not quite the 36 that we were entailed in our contract. We had a three year, 36,000 mile lease. You can obviously do 10,000 if you choose. You can go 15, I believe, but for the most part, you're gonna stick between the 10 and 12,000 mile range. Now, if we were to do this again, Absolutely, we would, but the biggest and quickest 
foot first call out for people that are not used to electric vehicles make sure to get the range you need if you travel a lot or even if you just want the convenience aspect try to spend a little bit more to get a higher level range get the long range model get a performance model that standard range unless you truly don't leave and go many places it is a little bit of a hindrance so that's my biggest call out in all this if I was to go back, I would definitely do it again. It would be with the long range and probably without full self-driving, which brings us to our next point. We paid $10,000 back when, actually it was, I think it was about 8,000 back when we got this in 2022 or 2020 and we paid for a function we don't have still to this day. So three years later, yes, we've had smart summon and some of the extra little quirks and auto lane changing that comes with the package, but the FSD package that we were promised to be rolling out in the near future never came. It is still not out today. So any purchaser that is now in the market, I definitely do not recommend getting FSD on that. So even on the new 2021 Model S we got, we did not opt in for full self-driving. It's just not worth it, especially at $12,000 now. So think about updating uh, or upgrading your model and save that $12,000, you do not need full self-driving. The autopilot that the vehicle comes with does 99% of everything you're gonna want on a daily basis. It has your ACC, your adaptive cruise control. It has lane keeping. It'll still kind of swerve for you. It will not change lanes without you indicating with the blinker and moving it, but not a big deal personally. Just a couple call outs with that. So again, if you're looking or thinking about getting a Tesla as your first vehicle, yeah, I think a lease is not a bad way to go. I would definitely do the math and just see if you're willing to keep the vehicle, how much of a difference that a purchase is currently as of this video. But overall, traditionally, leases and purchases are not very close together. Usually you save a little bit of money leasing because at the end of the three years, you don't have anything to show for it. Whereas at the end of three years on a purchase, you can easily sell the vehicle as long as you're not upside down um, and possibly have some po positive equity in it. But for the most part, that's it guys. I don't wanna ramble on too, more, too much more. Stay tuned to the channel. We appreciate all the support. The 2021 Model S will be our new daily driver. We have another vehicle we're going to be uh, going into shortly. It's not all electric though, uh, but still has some really cool features uh, that I'm not used to in a standard gas vehicle. Let us know what else you want to know. If you have any questions, throw it down below in the comments. We will throw that referral code in here. If you guys are looking at getting Tesla Solar right now, make sure to use that so you can save yourself an extra 300 bucks as well on that. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.